piece I'm showing in Beyond the Mirror is called Becoming One with the Night. It's 35 inches by 45 inches, and it's really composed in two sections. On the left, which functions as the foreground, and it's the most representational section, uh, you see a girl or a young woman seated on what appear to be steps to a porch. It's a very contemplative pose. She's got her arms on her knees, like, like a young woman would. And there are suggestions of real things in that part of the quilt. There's part of a porch railing and a porch support. And so that's the area where you think you're looking at a traditional scene. It's the most like that. The rest of the quilt is significantly more abstract. There are some identifiable shapes. There are trees, there are shadows. And I've worked to integrate the two parts, but not in the way that would make you think this whole piece is, oh, there's a girl on the porch next to some trees. The trees aren't in proportion to the girl. The scale is wrong. Uh, and there are also some sort of uh, intentionally ambiguous things. Down by her feet, there's what appears to be water. So that's part of the night scene interacting with her, but not like she's actually seated next to those trees. So my hope was right away to create two different realities in one piece, the representational part, and then the more suggestive part of something else going on. Ever since I've been creating textile artworks, I have been interested in themes that deal with a young girl in particular and her journey. So looking beyond the mirror is, is just what interests me. I'm, I'm not real interested in creating portraits of people for the purpose of a realistic portrait like you would for a commemorative piece. I'm interested in portraying the young woman and what's going on inside her. So it was perfect. I, I hope someone would also conclude that I like to make work that, while I hope it's pleasing to look at and aesthetically um, interesting, it's not just that. It's always about something. You know, the works that I'm making are storytelling works, and I intend for them to have something more for you to see beneath the surface. I hope that's visible to someone. If there's a gut sense, I just can't take my eyes off of this thing, that's a powerful work. If I want to look at it close up, and I want to walk across the room and see it in two different ways, that's a powerful work. If I want to come back to it again, that's a powerful work. And if there's something new to see each of those times when you come back, that's a powerful work. So I try to look at my own work after it's created and sometimes I think I get that. You know, sometimes I, um, I'm not as close as I would like to be, but it's sort of a test that I apply to myself. I don't know how to go about it the other way and say, in advance, what can you do to make sure a work would be powerful, except to be true to the things that are interesting to you. And I, my sense is that, that once you've accomplished your medium, if then you really have something interesting to say, one hopes you will create a powerful work.